We recently did a three-part program on how to save money around the house. And our viewers sent in some amazing, amazing tips and strategies. And that's what's so great about doing this oh, yeah. is the fact that as much as we give information out on how to live frugally, we always have great tips and ideas from our viewers as to how to do that even better and ways that we never have used in over 30 years of being frugal. And now we know that you all do not scour the comments section nearly as thoroughly as we do. And we want to make sure that you don't miss a thing. So today we're going to cover 40 strategies for saving money around the house. And these come courtesy of our viewers. I am Hope. And I'm Larry. From Under the Median. Welcome to Thrifty Thursday. <laughs> Every Thursday on this channel, we give you practical tips, ways that you can spend less and save more. In fact, this entire channel, in case this is your first time joining us, is all about practical frugality and living with a spirit of joy and abundance on a budget. Mm -hmm. Now, as I mentioned, we just completed a three-part series, ways we sort of worked our way through the house, ways that you can save money in mm -hmm. every room of your home. We started in the laundry room, then we moved to the kitchen, then we talked all about electricity costs and lowering your electrical usage last week. Now, our viewers left such fantastic suggestions of their own. We wanted to make sure that we passed their suggestions on to you because we think some of these are absolutely fantastic. Let's get started in the laundry room. Eva has our first comment. Well, Eva says that we should use baking soda instead of detergent because it's way less cost. It's also eco-friendly and Eva like I Googled it. I have never ever thought about just using straight baking soda as a laundry detergent substitute, but I Googled it and she's absolutely right. It does work. And as we all know, baking soda is super inexpensive. Thank you, Eva. Number two, Rhonda says, if you happen to run a dehumidifier in the summer, she does. She said, set up your drying rack. So she's talking about an old fashioned drying rack that you dry clothes on. Set it up near the dehumidifier because the clothing on the drying rack will dry quicker. That, that is an awesome tip. That makes I, sense. I would not have thought of that. that yep. That's a great tip. Uh, the third tip is by Sage. And she says that baby formula scoops are perfect for measuring laundry detergent. I've used my granddaughter's scoop she is six now, and it was recycled and free. Free is always good. We, we are great promoters of free. Now, in case you're wondering what Sage is talking about, in the video we did on how to save money in the laundry room, we talked about how laundry detergent manufacturers have you using way laundry detergent that you actually need to use in order to get laundry clean. You need about two tablespoons. Mm -hmm. So she's saying, make sure that if you know somebody who's using baby formula, grab that scoop when they're done with it and say, can I use this? That scoop is apparently exactly two tablespoons. Love it. How about that? Uh, number four, Hope. If one must use the dryer, use woolen balls to help toss the clothing around instead of using dryer sheets or fabric softener in the washer. She's talking about... Actually, that was Dave. Oh, Dave. 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 Sorry, Dave. Dave. Dave, <laughs> Dave, Dave is talking that. about these. We'll show you a nice shot of them in a sec here. Uh, these are woolen dryer balls. I have a set of five of them. I could learn to juggle or I can use them in the dryer. I don't use my dryer very often. Uh, I usually line dry. But Dave is absolutely right in that dryer balls will cut your dryer time. And I believe they take static cling out as well. These dryer balls were a gift from one of Larry's cousins and she actually raises sheep. So the wool on there is from her sheep and she sheared her sheep. She spun the wool and she actually dyed it hand dyed it herself. Nice. I know. Nice. Very good. Really awesome dryer bowls. All right. Uh, Lisa says, in some areas, electric rates go down in the evening. Mm -hmm. So she washes her laundry after 9 p.m. Now, we've done this too, and we're on the hourly rate plan. We talked about that on the saving yeah. electricity video, which, which Hope will leave a link to in the description. Uh, but that's a great tip. Now, one of the things that was interesting was I put this comment in here because Lisa said, 
she has the opportunity to do that. Well, some other viewers said, I checked, my electric company doesn't offer me to do anything except a flat rate plan, what do I do? So I wanna answer that question really quickly. If you have an electric company, a utility company that says, nope, what we offer is what we offer. Not only can you not switch to a different plan, uh, but you have to pay whatever we are charging you and it's a flat rate. I think it's best just to know this information moving forward and you need to focus on dropping your usage in all the other ways that you can because regardless of whether you pay a flat rate or whether you don't yes you're not going to be able to wash your clothing at nine o'clock at night or five o'clock in the morning like we do mm -hmm. and get a lower electric rate but if you wash less if you wash in cold water if you follow the strategies that we've already given you then you will lower your usage and thus lower your final electric bill Okay. Uh, Kate says that she makes her own detergent for 90 cents for 18 cups of laundry soap. And this uh, makes 36 and a half cup loads. Wow. That is Kate, incredible. You rock, man. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I love that idea. That's, that's saving some money. Okay. SJ, I happen to know that she lives in, uh, in England and she's a regular viewer. And I loved her idea. Uh, I don't use fabric conditioner in any wash. She just puts white vinegar in with some essential oil in a bottle and she uses that. Also, this was fascinating to me. Thank you, SJ. Staff that work in department stores that sell towels will tell you not to use fabric conditioner on towels because it stops them from being as absorbent. Oh, I never heard that before. Never knew that. Now, never we don't knew that. we don't happen to use fabric softener, but but SJ, that's a great tip. All right. Um, next one. Okay, next one is from Ann, and she says, if you're going to use a dryer, do consecutive loads and don't allow the dryer to have to heat up each time. That is a great tip. You know, I've noticed that with the toaster oven too, just to get it into the kitchen a little bit. If you use a toaster oven, and you use it yeah. the second time, it doesn't take as long to toast that second bread. Uh, so I imagine that works the very same with laundry. I never had thought about that before. Great tip. Okay. Jim says, Dawn, Dawn dish detergent works better on stains than stain removers. Didn't know that, but that kind of makes sense because Dawn is made for to remove grease. Mm -hmm. Right. The next couple of tips actually deal with some alternatives to using laundry detergent in the first place. Some viewers said, don't even bother. Don't use it. Here are some other ideas. All right. Uh, one viewer said, use soap nuts. Hmm. They last a long time and they're a natural way to wash. So if you're unfamiliar with soap nuts, I was. I had to look it up, guys. Had to use Google. Hmm. Uh, they're dried shells or husks from the soap berry nut. Even though they're called nuts, they actually are berries. And they release a natural soap when you use them in uh, your washing machine and it apparently works very, very well. It's 100% biodegradable and several of you said you use them and absolutely love them. We are going to leave a link uh, in the recommended products section. So look in the description of the video, all the products that we talk about on the video, we are going to leave a recommended products section and there'll be direct links to each of the products that we talk about. So the soap nuts will be in there. I've not used them personally, but they look way cool. Janie also has a way that she does laundry without actually adding laundry soap. Okay, Janie says that she uses a wash ball, which works by changing the surface <laughs> tension of the water to facilitate cleaning with no detergent is needed whatsoever. One wash ball lasts for hundreds of washes. And Amazon even says 1,500 washes. Now, I'm not familiar with a wash ball. Never Have heard of any it. of you used wash balls? We know that uh, Janie does. <laughs> Do any of the rest of you. I'm fascinated by these alternative methods of doing laundry. So I'm going to read to you. This was on the Amazon product page, and this was a review that was left by a reviewer named Andy. And I just love the way that Andy talked about this method of doing laundry. Uh, because one of, the, one of the questions that was left was, uh, 
I, I have sons who, you know, do construction, they come home, they have grease stains, they have a lot of dirt, their clothes smell. And I'm really afraid that by reducing the amount of laundry detergent I'm using, I'm, it's not going to be effective enough. And I'm going to wind up with clothes that smell after I'm done laundering them. Help me. What do I do? All right. So this is what Andy said about using this wash ball product. No joke. I grabbed my son's practice jersey from basketball. Knowing if anything would challenge the effectiveness <laughs> of this product, it would be that. So um, I threw it into the wash with a bunch of other baseball stuff, including lace-up ankle braces, whose smell could take down an angry badger. <laughs> and they all went to the washer with no detergent and just two of these wash balls. I could not believe it. I even had the gall to put that jersey up to my face and smell it. And I'm telling you, everything came out as fresh as mountain air on a cool, crisp morning. I was floored, no detergent. All right, so that was what one reviewer had to say. And I will say there are a lot of reviews on Amazon on these wash balls and they tend to get really, really high reviews from people. So. Tell us in the comment section, have you used the wash ball? Have you used the soap nuts? Because then you're talking about zero uh, use of laundry detergent at all. And once again, we're going to leave a link to the wash ball in the recommended product section. And I've got to say, I'm all for mountain fresh air. <laughs> yeah. We should go back to the mountains. I think that <laughs> it's a sign. Oh my Ooh, gosh. Yes. We're supposed to go back like soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we will. All right. Okay, the next one is can't. Hang dry outdoors, our viewers suggest using a screened-in porch or even the garage. Several wow. people suggested this and said, you know what? No outdoor clothesline. You got um, you got laws by your neighborhood association. No worries. Just set up portable units in your garage and open the door and let it hang dry in your garage. That's Love a, that idea. That's a great we tip. We are moving to the kitchen. All okay, right. saving money in the kitchen. Once again, more viewer tips. Yes. Lillian says, I usually turn the oven or stove top off a minute or two before the item is completely finished. So pasta, when it's very al dente, or bread, a minute or two before the timer goes off. The oven doesn't lose heat that fast. That's great. Great way to use utilize that. all of the heat. Love that. That was from Lillian. And Dora says, <laughs> I like this on so many different levels, Dora. <laughs> a used gift card plastic makes a great scraper for pots and pans. Just enough bend in them and small enough to get into the corners of square dishes. So my first thought was like, if any of y'all are like Dave Ramsey in your way through life right now and you're on those baby <laughs> steps, I'm thinking those credit cards, rather than like cut them up in small pieces, you could just use them to clean your pots and pans. And every time you do dishes, you'll be reminded of your journey toward becoming debt free. <laughs> I think it's a win-win. You know what? I, I give her a lot of credit on that one. All right. Denise says... I dilute my dish soap. She doesn't even bother to use it full force, guys. She dilutes it three parts water to one part soap, and it still works great. Okay. I would not have thought of that. I wouldn't have either. Uh, Dinah says, I always use Dawn for washing dishes, and I only use a teaspoon. Okay. Dinah, you were not the only one who challenged me on our recommendation of one tablespoon of quality dish detergent to do a sink full of dishes. There were several of you that said, mm, Hope, I think you're a little bit heavy on that one tablespoon. I think you can do it with less. So we're trying it with less and it's actually working. So thank you guys. You actually proved me wrong. And if you have quality dish detergent, try less than a tablespoon and see if it works for you. <laughs> Dinah also recommends she has a great place to buy those microfiber cloths that I talked about last week on the program. Buy them in the auto department. Oh, really? Yes. She said they are uber cheap there. And you can get a 12 or 24 pack for about 50 cents per cloth. And she was not the only one who said that. There were several of you who said, don't even shop in kitchen wares. Shop the auto department. I will have a link I think there's a pack of 50 of them. I'll leave a link to those on Amazon 
And she's right, they were cheaper. And I think they were in the auto department list in an auto department instead of the kitchen department. But don't try Great getting idea. your air filters from the kitchen department. <laughs> yeah, that's probably not a good idea. Catherine says, I like to use Scotch brand scrubbing pads well enough, but my favorite is homemade scrubbers made from the nylon netting that citrus fruits are packed in. Because they're made of netting, they rinse out more completely than the Scotch pads, so they don't get smelly and don't attract insects. Easy to make, and my very favorite price, free. Catherine, thank you. You were also not the only one who said, you know, don't even bother to buy the Scotch Bright pads. Just make your own out of the cotton netting that fruits and vegetables come in. And I think this is a great great idea and they're, <laughs> love it and they're biodegradable in the landfill love it how about that love it good all the way around okay carolyn says years ago i calculated the cost of different appliances and made a chart and posted a sign on each item to increase in awareness for the family carolyn we could like be twins i love this idea this is so something that i would do so she gives further advice i i like the way carolyn i like the way she works guys um she adds a couple of things to our chart, all right? So I'll tell you about the chart in just a sec. Uh, she wants to know about the cost of microwave use and the cost of electric fry pan and other small appliances. Carolyn was not alone. So if you are in the dark, so to speak, uh, when we talked about saving money in the kitchen, I had a chart and I actually showed the difference between the cost of using your electric oven versus your stove top versus your toaster oven versus your uh, crock pot. And I showed which was least expensive. Several, and I do mean several people wrote in and said, but what I really wanna know is how does the cost of using the microwave fit in there? Mm -hmm. And how does the cost of using my air fryer fit in there? And how does the cost, most importantly, of my Instant Pot <laughs> fit <laughs> into that whole scenario? So here's what I did and here's why I bring this up. I actually created a new chart and we are gonna do a program next Thrifty Thursday, guys. Next Thrifty Thursday, Thursday is gonna be all about showing you exactly how you can figure out the wattage of all of your kitchen appliances how you can translate that into kilowatts per hour and how you translate that into what it's cost. actually going to cost you to use those appliances. I have a new and updated <laughs> a kitchen appliance chart and I will unveil it next week. And these appliances that you've asked about will be on the chart, which is a great time for us to say, you don't wanna miss that program. So this is a good time to subscribe so you won't miss mm -hmm. that video. And I just want to mention that in the video for next week, we're going to be talking about a device that measures precisely every item in your kitchen that you have a question about. It's called a kilowatt meter. It will tell you exactly how many watts it's using, how many amps it's using, and the exact cost depending on how much your utility company charges you. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you are subscribed and make sure you hit the bell notification button. That button is going to make sure that YouTube sends you a notification exactly when we drop that video for next Thrifty Thursday because you mm -hmm. don't want to miss it. All right. Thank you so much, Caroline. Another way I save electricity and gas costs is by using ambient heat. For example, number one, put eggs to hard boil, but when the water boils, turn off the heat and leaving the cover on and the pan on the burner in 15 minutes, beautifully 15 minutes. hard boiled. Uh, I do that when cooking cream of wheat. I bring it to a oh, boil, yeah. turn the flame off and leave it sit and it's, and it's done. Uh, boil water for noodles. When water boils, pour in dry pasta and a bit of oil. Stir, replace cover and let that sit. The dissipating heat is enough to make the noodles perfect in about 15 to 20 minutes. Note, the gas or electricity isn't on. The pan sits cooling down and cooking. You know why I like this idea? Because it's, is it going to save you a ton of money? No. But if you do this in a dozen different areas of the kitchen, it's going to save you money. That's one of the things that we're really trying to convey to you, especially right now, yeah. is that small changes, which result in small amounts of money, 
add up to big money over time. And this is the perfect example of that concept. Oh yeah. yeah. Colette, she has a recommendations. Scrubbing cloths. She uses Skoy. I was completely unfamiliar with these, but I looked I them up and I am so impressed. They are made from recycled plastic. Uh, they clean great and are reusable. Just throw them in the washer when you're done. She's had hers for about three years and she thinks they cost her about $13. I actually, they're, they're Scandinavian in, in design. And I'll have a link to those in the recommended product section because I looked them up. And not only are they um, are they eco-friendly, but they're really attractive. They're very pretty. <laughs> Coach Liz. First, I like your name, Coach Liz. I like <laughs> What's that. What's her tip? I like that. Yeah. I, I thought it read couch at first. And I thought, well, that would be cool too. But Coach Liz is good. <laughs> tip. Okay. I use my Farberware Classic Pot with steamer insert to steam veggies on top and to add hot dogs, hamburger, or Italian sausage to the water below to boil. Complete dinner for three in less than 30 minutes on one burner. Awesome. Yes. Multitasking I that love pan. It. Does anybody else stack cook? Because that's what that's an example of. So you've got the water underneath. It's it's boiling. You're cooking something under there. You've got the steamer insert. You're steaming something up above there. And so theoretically, you can stock items and cook them all in one pot. One pot cooking. That's great. Love that idea. Anybody else do that? Because I love that idea. Uh -huh. Okay, Keiki says, I've been using a dishwasher hack from Lydia Sun. Use a spray bottle and put a small amount of detergent in the bottle, fill the rest with water, then use that to spray dishes, wash them, and it works great. Only use Dawn. I've heard that over and over Dawn's again. Dawn's good. Two, yeah. two things, yeah. Dawn or Palm Olive. People were crazy about both of those, saying those were really, really good quality. Yeah. Okay, Lois reminds us, you mentioned stirring things in the mm -hmm. crock pot. I suggest that unless you absolutely have to stir the food to avoid, uh, to avoid sticking, that you don't. Every time you take the lid off of a crock pot, you are letting heat escape <laughs> and it has to warm up again. Also, by keeping the lid on, the food cooks more efficiently. And I do use a luxury item, crock pot liners. It saves on cleanup and dish soap. So maybe it's not so much of a luxury item. Okay, first of all, Lois, thank you for that comment. This is my walk of shame because <laughs> um, she wasn't the only one who commented because I, I made the comment uh, in last week's video that you don't watch your crock pot all the time. Stand there for eight hours or six hours and like watch your crock pot cook. You just take the lid off and stir it every once in a while. And ho, oh, several of you said, don't take that lid off. Don't touch the crock pot. <laughs> and you are absolutely right. You're absolutely correct. Every time you take that lid off, it takes about 45 minutes for the crock pot to actually get back up wow. to the correct temperature. I know it has a tremendous wow. impact. I will no longer, I cooked something in the crock pot yesterday and all of your words resonated in my mind. <laughs> I put those potatoes and green beans and onions in there, put it on high for four hours and didn't touch it. It was done in four hours without me taking the lid off to stir it or check it. So yeah, that's actually a super valid point. Now her point about crock pot liners, you know, one of the things we really talk about on this channel is that living frugally does not mean living um, like a, de a deprived lifestyle. So mm -hmm. you're not depriving yourself of anything. Um, crock pot liners, I happen to think are really practical, especially mm -hmm. if you're doing some really like yucky things that are gonna mess up the inside of the crock pot. And so, you know, give yourself that little luxury and to you it's practicality and it makes perfect sense so choose when where and how you will spend your money make it count and if it makes sense to you and it's practical then it's i don't think it counts as a luxury mm -mm. yeah and there's one more tip for the kitchen uh, usage and that is put a spoon across the top of the pan when cooking pasta and it won't won't boil over. Now that's a little different than the, the, the system that Hope uses. Uh, she usually cooks pasta by sound. So when you hear all this sizzling and so on, then she knows that she's got it boiling and she needs to turn, turn the pot down. I, say, I, I can tell you exactly how long it takes to get from the chair and the failure into the kitchen because I start hearing that boiling over sound and I run there. It's like, you know, 
10 seconds or something. So um, do you guys do this? Does this really work? I got to know. I got to know because apparently it does. And I've missed this all of my adult life. I think it has to do with surface tension. I've got to be honest. I think there's a scientific principle at work here. So you got to tell me in the comment section whether you do it and really, whether it really works. We're right. moving from the kitchen. Now, yeah, saving electricity costs. These are right. more viewer tips. These are overall, like throughout your house, saving electricity costs. Now, I will tell you right now, here's a great time to put a plug in for the fact that we have a free resource. We actually have a home energy checklist where I walk you through each room of your house and give you some real simple ways that you can save on a electricity usage in those areas of your home. It's a little checklist. So if you want that, it's free. And there's going to be a link in the description of this video to get your free home energy checklist. All right. Saving throughout the house. Okay. Uh, Janet wrote us, I live in England and your checklist inspired me to buy some inexpensive timers, which will turn off my router at night, as well as charge our phones and laptop just before we wake instead of all throughout the night. I'm hoping it will save us money. Well, you have to kind of mm -hmm. determine how much power those timers use versus the amount of power that your items you have them hooked up to use. And once again, we can talk about that on next our next uh, video next with the kilowatt week. meter. Yeah. All right, so Janet, um, so did you hear that? Janet got our checklist and she's using it to make a practical difference in her life and in how much energy she is using throughout the month. So make sure you request the home energy checklist. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jana says, <clears throat> years ago I traveled for work. An assignment would be a minimum of three months. Holy cow. And sometimes longer. I hope they sent you to like way cool places to hang out for that period of time, Jonna. Um, I figured my electric bill would go down, right? Makes sense. She's not there to use electricity. Surely it's going to drop like a rock. Not so. She tells us she lives alone. Nobody's there even using the electricity. It did go down. Just a few cents. So she employed a strategy. Next time she left on that long business trip, she tried unplugging things before she left and her bill dropped 76%. Wow. Now, we talked about That's... this last week on the program. We talked about vampire energy mm -hmm. and how it sucks energy. Appliances suck energy even when they're turned off and you don't realize it, what a difference that makes. Y'all, 76% she saved. She was excited. Then she decided she was going to see how much lower she could get it. So the next time she left again for three months, she unplugged like everything she could possibly think <laughs> of. And it went down another 11%. She's like, this was amazing. So in case you were wondering at the validity of <clears throat> the strategy that we taught you last week about unplugging things in order to lower that vampire energy usage, she told you it really, really does work. Let me give you a practical example of one item that we often leave plugged in around the clock. Yeah. Those little transformers, they're a little transformer block that converts uh, your power from your house to maybe a battery operated appliance, mm -hmm. like your phone chargers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or uh, uh, they're called adapters. So they might adapt, it's like, like in, a, in the United States, let's say 120 volts down to nine volts or down to six volts. I checked one of those on the kilowatt meter and they draw seven and a half watts all the time they're plugged wow. in, even if something is not plugged into them. So if you have chargers all over your house, Unplug those things. They're, they're drawing a lot of power. You're not getting any good out of them. All right, guys. Once again, that's just plug for next week's program because we're <laughs> going to share. We couldn't get it all in one program, guys. So next week, all about um, how to save on electricity costs. Know what stuff is actually costing you. Yeah, and we'll demonstrate that thing, too. Crystal, blackout curtains. This is actually a super valid idea. She lives in a warm area on afternoons. The AC just literally could not keep up. Mm -hmm. She bought some inexpensive blackout curtains from Amazon. Bada boom, bada bang. <laughs> and her electric costs dropped. She actually said, look on Facebook Marketplace or outlet stores. That's where she got hers. She didn't get hers from Amazon. Facebook Marketplace or outlet stores. The difference of the temperature in rooms with the blackout curtains versus those without is significant. Now, if you can't get blackout curtains, our next, the, the tip that we really recommend if you don't get blackout curtains is at least get line curtains. 
you would be astounded at the difference it makes to have a lined curtain versus one that's not lined. Yep, yep. Anytime you can cut down uh, an outside source that might be heating mm -hmm. your home undesirably, you're going to save money. Pure Pondering lives in Arizona, and mm -hmm. she has a, a little tip that's applied just to apparently her city. Or hot, hot weather there. Her, her utility. Right. Yeah, hot, hot is, is a real... Uh, it's a real element there. So in Arizona, you get a one-time credit for planting up to four shade trees from the electric company's list. They have to be 10 to 15 feet from your house on the south, east, or west side. So those are the sides where the sun has the most impact. And any amount of shade that you can put up outside is going to save your home on air conditioning costs. Now, she makes a tremendous point. Where did she get this rebate from? From her utility company. And this just sort of reflects back on the fact this was one of the tips, once again, that we shared last week in the program, which was that you need to become really familiar with your electric company's website, with your utility company's website, because that's where you're going to find all the information about rebates they're offering, ways that you can lower your utility usage, and most importantly, you can get to the back end of your own account and you can look on a daily basis, on sometimes even an hourly basis, to see how you are effectively using your energy. Uh, if you are kind of feeling like, oh gosh, I missed that, no worries, okay? It was a three-part series and I am going to make certain that you can watch that. So the three-part series is going to be linked up above and it's also going to be linked in the description of this video. So you can go back, catch all three of those parts and make sure you get all the tips and strategies we gave. Okay, Radically for Jesus has a great tip on coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, I switched to a pour over method for coffee that doesn't require a machine at all. I spent about $10 on the metal filter and I love that thing. But if you drink more than a cup or two a day, it would probably be annoying. Uh, I drink it by the gallon, so yeah, that, that <laughs> probably does. would be annoying. And yes, he sleeps well at night. I don't get it, but he does. <laughs> we, we, uh, we bought a little insulated carafe to keep larger amounts warm. Uh, paid a couple of bucks at a thrift store. I used it for my daughter's birthday party so adult guests could have warm coffee. I forgot to clean it out afterward. 24 hours later, that coffee was still warm. That amazed me. Well, we All did right. we did talk about this unit on one of the previous videos and uh, and I'll I'll put a photograph of this in, but this is this is I think the very best thermos I've ever used. Uh, and it's called a Zeroshi. Is that how you pronounce it's it? It's Zeroshi. Some Zeroshi. of you were very frustrated because when we showed it on the the video, you the camera you the camera won't <laughs> it won't focus on you it. You couldn't so. get the name brand, so it's yeah. Zeroshi. It is our very favorite favorite oh, yeah. uh, coffee carafe, coffee, whatever you call it. It keeps coffee <laughs> warm for 10 or 12 hours at least at a time. And I mean hot. It's hot. We highly recommend them. And we're going to leave a link. The recommended product section in the description of this video is going to have a link to those. And we absolutely recommended them. Yeah, it's, it's really good. And this this stays hot all day long. And, uh, and I use it every day. Okay, okay, go ahead. Oh. Another viewer said, be sure to place the fridge a sufficient amount away from the wall so that air can circulate freely and that helps to carry away the heat. That yeah. was a great tip. I oh, yeah. loved that because it's something you wouldn't intuitively think about. Mm -hmm. Jennifer says, Here in Australia, uh, around one in five homes uses solar power wow. and it is increasing. Maybe worth looking into to lower electricity usage and costs. Electricity costs are high here, around 32 to 40 cents a kilowatt hour. Wow, that is a okay. lot more than we pay. So I have to say, that's one of the reasons we are so cognizant, like um, three out of four of our viewers is in the U.S. and the rest of you do not reside in the continental 50 United States, right? <laughs> and so um, we just wanted to make sure that you understand that we know that some of you pay significantly more for energy costs than we do. And I loved this idea, Jennifer, one in five homes. It is not nearly, nearly that in the U.S., although I will say that I think it's gaining in popularity. And it's, it's I think, important to, to give that a look-see and see if that will work 
for you. The cost of installation is a lot. If you're going to be in your house for 20, 30 years, then I think it's probably going to pay you back pretty quickly, especially at 32 to 40 cents per kilowatt hour. The average in the U.S. is actually 13 cents mm -hmm. uh, per kilowatt hour. I did a study on this back in 2008 when we installed mm -hmm. a couple of panels on our old house. Yeah. And uh, it usually takes 20 to 25 years to make back your money on a major installation yeah. of solar panels. Uh, so, because because our costs are so low, it's, it, it just isn't done that much here. Okay, Sarah says she lives in New Jersey and she has an equal payment plan. So in other words, it evens out all of your payments to the utility company and for her that has worked very, very well. Mm -hmm. Fred, all right, Fred, Fred <laughs> is a brave man. Go, Larry. Fred uh, is brave. Tell them why. <laughs> let, let me just preface this by saying that I cannot personally endorse this tip, but it is a good tip. Cold showers uh, can save on the hot water if you're brave enough. You know, I think that would save a lot on coffee because if you weren't wide awake after that, ain't nothing going to wake you up. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, do you have any? Fred, you are brave. <laughs> and then, I'm not sure we're that brave. <laughs> and, then, and then he says, do you have any advice for using the AC more efficiently. Yes, take cold showers and you won't need it anymore. <laughs> Fred, actually we do. We did a video on it. We're gonna make sure it's linked up above and in the description of this video. We gave you a whole a whole lot of ways that you can lower your uh, costs of cooling in the summertime. <laughs> MK says, in the winter, we've gone from summer to winter, guys, just like that. In the winter, overnight, she decreases the electricity level of the whole house and she puts on socks and warm clothes. It's something, you know what? You would think we would not have to like say this. If you're cold in the winter, put on a sweater, put on socks, put on shoes. But how often as parents that we like, our kids are like, we're cold and we're like, put socks and shoes on. It's, it's January, put socks and shoes on. So it's a great reminder, actually. Uh, she has a gas fireplace that helps heat the house up. She superheats her house. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. she lowers, drastically lowers the um, thermostat overnight. And she said, because she's like heated the house with that electric fireplace, superheated that area where they're going to be sleeping, it stays warm for 12 hours. You know, we did this when we were first married before we had children. Mm -hmm. We used a kerosene heater to keep the family room warm that we were sitting in in the evenings. We turned our thermostat down to, I think we got it down to 53 oh, like degrees. Yeah, it was yeah, really it was, low. It was yeah, really it was. cool. But we didn't have any kids in the rest of the parts of the house, mm -hmm. so we could do this. We had lots of blankets on the bed, and we just oh, hopped man. in and we stayed. Didn't move all night long. Don't I, get out, whatever you have to do. It's like camping. Don't get up. And I don't know how much money that saved us, but it, it did save us. Yeah. So, yeah, but, you know, so here's my point. I put this in because I think it's a valid comment. We are kind of uh, hesitant, I will say, not afraid, but hesitant to really lower that thermostat overnight because we are afraid we're going to wake up and we're going to be cold. Here's the truth. Once you lower that thermostat, the ambient temperature in your home lowers far more slowly than you think it will. Mm -hmm. And the truth is you can safely lower that thermostat five or six degrees even overnight. And the rate at which your house cools down is, is pretty doggone slow. And you're probably not going to get cold overnight, especially if you put extra blankets on the bed. So I just, it's something for you to consider, to think about. We love to like throw tons of ideas out on this channel. And if they don't stick for you, that's totally cool with us. Mm -hmm. We don't, we don't mind at all, but we want to make sure that you're aware of just the variety of different ways. So you can pick and choose what really, really works for absolutely, you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Molly says, hello from England. Hey, well, Molly. Hello, we England. love England. We'd love to visit sometime. Yeah. Uh, little tip. After using the kettle, top up with more water and leave it ready for the next time. Yeah. And that way what's left in there is gonna warm up what you pour in. It won't take as much to heat the whole kettle up the second time. Now here's something else Molly actually discovered. We don't think about the fact that the number of times we wash our hands every day using warm water is gonna make a difference. But here's what she discovered. She found out that even the act of the 30 second hand washing, right? So we all teach our kids to s sing the ABC song while they're washing their hands, especially this day and age is like, wash your hands well. <laughs> um, she said she discovered 
just by observation that literally her hot water heater did kick on every single time she washed her hands using warm water. It doesn't take that much for that water heater to kick on and off every single time. So she said, wash your hands in cold water. If you wash, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's well, 30 seconds. Your cold water is going to be the temperature of your home, depending on where your pipes are. You're just, right. If you're just using a small amount of water, it's going to be the water that's in your existing pipes. So it shouldn't be too cold. Once you get to the water that's actually coming in from the outside, then it could be down to 58 degrees when it's when it's rolling over your hands. So that's that's a judgment call for you. Okay, Teddy. Teddy got a solar oven, man. Teddy not even using his oven in his house anymore. <laughs> uh, Teddy's been having a great time, a grand time, making everything from rosemary bread, homegrown raspberry crescent rolls, grilled garden vegetables. First of all, Teddy, we want to come visit. Just you, say, where do Teddy, you live? We, we need we, to visit. We need to chat. Yeah. Um, secondly, we actually have a solar oven. Um, ours is a homemade one. The kids made it when they were in 4-H. They went to... Um, they went to the state competition with their homemade solar cooker. And I don't know, gosh, our older boys are 22 and almost 25. And so long time they ago. made it a long time ago. It still works. Yeah. And I get, I set it out every once in a while. About nine years ago, I think, is when they yeah. made that. So, that's, that's really more like a slow cooker, though. Uh, it, it does, ours doesn't get hot enough to really bake things in. It's, it's more like a, like a crock pot. It cooks at about 250 degrees, but I mean, yeah. it's a great idea. I'm going to leave a link, an Amazon link to the slow cooker or to the uh, solar oven that Teddy bought in case you want to take a look at it. It does look kind of cool. I have to say it looks really, really if, interesting. If you live in the Southwest, you know, Arizona, New Mexico, California, Australia, anywhere that you get the dry, really warm heat, those things work great. I mean, they are really good in those climates. Anybody else really use solar ovens? I'd love to know because I'm, I mean, I'm a little fascinated by it because clearly we have one, but um, it's because we made one, not because we bought one. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, Lynette, she said, don't just wa don't just lower that water heater temperature. Mm -mm, you turn it all the way off. If you're gone all day, you just turn it off. She wasn't the only one who mentioned that. Several of you said, I just turn it off. I'm not, if I'm not going to be home, why am I paying to heat water when I'm not even in the house? When I get back home, it takes 15 minutes for the water heater to come up to temperature. And then I'm saving all of that electricity. I like that idea. Some of, some of you others said that you put it on timers. You put your water heater on a timer in order to um, to know when it's coming off and on. Yeah, and so, there are other types of hot water heaters that only only use, uh, they heat the water up as you need it, those real small. I forget, on I forget. demand on hot demand. water heaters. Yeah, uh, those are very efficient. We have never had one, but I'd love to know, really, if you have one and it's been like a real hit for you and it's seriously lowered your energy costs, I'd love to know. Um, I've seen some mixed reviews, but I'd love to know from you guys. Mm -hmm. What do you think about it? Okay. Uh, next set of tips. Okay. The next tip is turned off the heated dry cycle on my dishwasher. Air dry only. Cycle time reduced by 20 minutes. Now, I thought it important to put this in because we've never had a dishwasher. I say that I gave birth to four dishwashers. They all worked pretty well as long as they weren't sick in bed at work or doing school. So and, <laughs> and she married one. I married a dishwasher. So I have lots of dishwashers, but I've never actually had one that was built in that, you know, did dishes all by itself. Um, and so this is a tip that you're not going to get from me because we try really hard to talk about things that we know about and not to talk about things that we don't know nothing about. And dishwashers is one of those. Right. So if you have a dishwasher, give this a try and see how it works for you. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, viewer also never turn stove burners onto the high setting. And that's, that is something I found incredibly interesting. The truth is you rarely, if ever, especially if you have an electric stove, you don't need that high setting like for anything. In fact, it's so hot that it generally scorches the bottom of pans if you put it on the high setting. So that's a valid point. High setting is going to use more electricity than the next settings down from that. There's usually four or five settings on a gas on an electric stove. So yeah. Yeah, I gotta admit, on the gas stove, I I, I want to when I'm making cereal in the morning, uh, oatmeal or cream of wheat or or uh, corn, whatever. Anyway, I I boil. I want to I want it to come to a boil quickly. So I'll turn. I'll use the largest burner and turn it up all the way. 
but, but maybe this works. I don't know. That's something we need to try and see, see if that would save us some gas. Uh, high efficiency air filters uh, and change monthly. I, I, All I don't, right. Now, I so don't these where, air filters are your furnace filters. Furnace filters. Okay. So Get use high efficiency, efficiency ones, ones and, and change, change them monthly. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I put this in here because so we have a friend who owned his own HVAC company for years. And he told me once, he said, this is the number one reason that I am called out to homes. And it's a common mistake that homeowners tend to make. He said, I walk in, they're saying, I don't know, the furnace isn't working real well. It just doesn't seem to be mm -hmm. keeping heat and the temperature. And so he said he goes and he looks at the air filter and it is literally caked with gunk. And he said, most homeowners do not realize the importance of those air filters or the fact that they need to periodically change them. And he said, if homeowners would do that, I'd have a lot fewer <laughs> service calls <laughs> and their, um, their furnace and AC would be working more efficiently for them. And once that gunks up, it, the, your furnace has to work a lot harder to, to keep the heat. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like putting a blanket in in front of the air intake. It's going to slow that circulation of air down. So yeah, you want to change those filters and, out. Nan says, uh, I'm not sure if anyone mentioned this, but the electricity company here has a free service. Free, like that word, free. free. Uh, you, you make an appointment and they come out and change all the light bulbs to LED and your shower head. You don't even pay for the bulbs. I also use all rebates available through the electric company. Believe it or not, Nan, we took advantage of this with yes, our own company, Ameren, and they came out and unfortunately I had already changed almost all of my bulbs out to LED. I'd already done this, so we didn't get to take part. They changed maybe. It was so efficient. I think one flood lamp they, they changed out. But they went through and they did an audit on our house, mm -hmm. and boy, did they make some changes. They and it did. was a great program. It was a really, really great program. So, so, so check with your utility company and see if they offer this, this kind of a program. A lot of them are right now. Now, that is actually one of the tips that I go into. I've written a whole ebook on home energy savings. So if you want the whole kit and caboodle, you wanna know all of my tips, I'll leave a link to that home energy savings guide. That will be in the description of this video. But you know what? If you want something free, <laughs> then I have a home energy checklist. Walks you through each area of your home and gives you ways that you can lower your energy consumption that is absolutely free. Mm -hmm. That free resource will also be listed in the description of this video. Awesome. Now, once again, if you have not watched the first three parts of this series where we walk you through the laundry room, the kitchen, and saving electricity costs all around your home, then you're gonna wanna make sure that you skip back and watch all of those or watch the ones that you've missed. Mm -hmm. There's a link to the whole series right there inside your screen. That's the next thing that you wanna take a look at.